Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 14th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. Apple today released its usual updates for everything, including iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. In particular, for macOS and iOS, it goes back a couple versions. 29 vulnerabilities are being addressed across the different operating systems. One that's sort of interesting is one that has already been exploited, CVE 2024-23296. This is a vulnerability in RT kit. Now back in March, Apple did release updates for this vulnerability for more recent versions of iOS and macOS. This particular update now does patch this vulnerability for older versions like iOS 16 and macOS 12 Monterey. If there's anything odd and interesting, then maybe the fact that there is only a single WebKit vulnerability being addressed in this update. Other than that, lots of privilege escalation flaws. There is a slight lock screen bypass. That's, uh, of course, always sort of interesting. Nothing I would think that suggests specifically expediting this update other than the update for the older versions of iOS and macOS. And then we got an interesting update from Juniper for JunoS and JunoS Evolved. Uh, this update addresses multiple vulnerabilities in OpenSSH. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky update to read here, but if I do read it correctly, the problem here is JunoS uses a heavily customized version of OpenSSH version 2.5 patch level 1. That particular version in its uh, default open source version had a number of vulnerabilities. And of course, if you're running a vulnerability scanner against a JunoS device, it looks at the OpenSH version number and then basically tells you that this device is vulnerable to everything that OpenSH to 7.5 is vulnerable to. However, some of these vulnerabilities do not apply for other vulnerabilities, and that's really what this particular advisory does. Uh, there are some specific workarounds that you may want to consider. The one that sort of sticks out here is uh, PKCS. 11 vulnerability. It has a CVSS score of 9.8. It can lead to arbitrary code execution, but it does require agent forwarding. So the workaround here is to turn off this feature. There is a second 9.8 vulnerability in SSH add, but this particular vulnerability does not affect the Juniper version of OpenSSH. So first of all, this may solve some of the issues you had with vulnerability scans against these devices, and then definitely read the advisory to see if you need to apply any of the mitigations suggested in the advisory. And then we got an interesting blog post by security company Phylum. Phylum has had the good habit of finding malicious packages in PyPy. This one is actually substantially different than what we have seen before. It appears to be a copy of the requests package. They call it requests Darwin Lite, which hints that it may be targeting Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS is often referred to as Darwin or it uses the Darwin uh, kernel. Now, what's sort of interesting about this is that as typical for malicious uh, Python packages, it uses uh, the request setup.py file, which is a file that's being run during package installation. And uh, well, in this case, it looks for a very specific system UUID. So only if this script is run on this very specific system, then malicious code is being 
executed. And what's even more interesting is that the malicious code is included in the form of a PNG image. This PNG image claims to be the requests package logo. And uh, well, in the malicious version, it does include some Go code, not Python code, that is then being executed. This code is a well-known command control package called Sliver that is, has been seen for quite a while now for OS X. So apparently they're trying to install this on one particular machine and one machine only. Not 100% clear what was going on here. Phylum suggests that some of this may have actually been removed, so uh, they don't have the entire malicious package here. But uh, my suspicion is a little bit that maybe this was a test and uh, the developer of this really just probably tested against their own system maybe. That's why we have this very specific UUID that is being targeted here. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. And as usual, if you like this podcast, please recommend it. And if you don't like it, well, uh, recommend it. Anyway, subscribe, like it, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.